Welcome to Show of the Week. I'm Jane. And I'm Andy. This week I was inspired by the Call of Duty voice packs of Snoop Dogg and the drill sergeant from Full Metal Jacket who gets shot. Spoilers. Ballistic vest ready. Those are some fine ass threads. You got that Spitfire drone now. So I've just finished recording my lines for the Call of Duty Andy Farron voice pack. It's a friendly helicopter on the way. It's um, it's one of the big ones. I want to say Hercules. It's, I don't think it's that though. Team, team match. Wait, death match. Death team, uh, death team match? Uh, to be honest, I'm not sure who's winning, but I believe in you. So go, be the best Call of Duty person you can be. It has sold incredibly poorly. Don't look at me like that. They sent me this massive book of gun names. I'm not going to learn all of that. All right, easy. I think you need to play something a bit more relaxing and more thoughtful. Well, what do you suggest? How about Child of Light? Out this week on XBLA and the Xbox One version of XBLA. Is that called XBLA? Child. Tuck yourself in bed, and let me tell a story of Lemuria, a long-lost kingdom, and a girl born for glory. The best way to describe Child of Light is a cross between an old-timey storybook and a JRPG. The Little Prince meets Grandia, or Peter Pan by way of Final Fantasy. It's an ethereal tale told in the form of an epic ballad about the young princess Aurora who wakes up in the strange fantasy world of Lemuria, which is missing its sun, moon and stars. Aurora sets out to recover the stolen celestial body so she can be reunited with her father, aided in her quest by a talking firefly named Idniculus. Most of the time you'll be navigating around the world like a simple platformer, solving puzzles by moving blocks around and lighting things up using Igniculus. Bump into an enemy on your travels and the game will switch into battle mode, which is where Child of Light's JRPG influences really become apparent in the turn-based, timeline-dependent combat system that will be familiar to fans of Grandia combat is surprisingly nuanced. If you manage to hit an enemy during their cast phase, their attack is interrupted, setting them way back into their attack timeline. Clever players can use attacks, buffs and debuffs to effectively manage battles and keep their enemies from ever landing a single blow. Some might find the charm wears off with extended play, but for people after something a little more relaxing than the usual man-shooters, Child of Light is a uniquely poetic proposition if you don't count Snoop Dogg's rhyming in Call of Duty. So yeah, it sounds lovely. It's all a poem as well, apparently. Yeah, XPLA's more artsy than you think. There's loads of classy 2D games on there. I'm going to need to hear at least five examples before I'm convinced. Okay. All right, five. I reckon I can manage this. I've got a B grade in my art GCSE and I can spell the word chiaroscuro, so I think I know a thing or two about what makes an arty, soulful 2D game. Just call me Mike Art Soul Channel if you like. Right, here are the five artiest 2D games on XBLA. Demonstrating that you don't need colour to make good art, Limbo takes place entirely in oppressive monochrome. While we'd hesitate to call watching a small boy die repeatedly or pulling the legs off a giant spider beautiful per se, it's certainly arresting. The game's visual style is so distinctive it was even spoofed in a Trials Evolution track called Trials of Limbo, which sounds like one of those boozy activities organised by an 18 to 30 package holiday rep. Alright, so this one is technically only 2D for about 90% of the time, still totally counts though. A gorgeous pixel art style, atmospheric colour choices and best of all, the opportunity to wrap your head around the game's weird retro platformer logic. You have to rewire your brain to accommodate thinking in 2.5 dimensions, and your reward for dodging a mental breakdown long enough to collect 30 cubes is to see how the entire thing fits together from a first person perspective. Magical. Shame we're apparently never going to see a sequel. Phil Fish quit the industry seemingly after being called a hipster one too many times. Still, with Fez selling over a million copies, that'll be a very expensive ball he's taking home with him. <coughs> Jonathan Blow's noodle baking temporal puzzle game is better known for its time bending mechanics than its graphical style, but regardless, the storybook platformer has some of the most arresting 2D art on XBLA. It's got an almost painterly aesthetic, with colours and shapes shifting from moment to moment. Even when melancholy lead character Tim is standing still, he's never completely static. Just remember, although Jonathan Blow has implied otherwise, there is no wrong way to enjoy Braid, which is why we're going to appreciate it based purely on the gentle fluttering of what we can only assume is the most emotionally deep necktie in video games. 
The key to Outland's beauty is the sense of scale and depth in its layered backgrounds, whether it's giant machinery, haunting architecture or an atmospheric forest. It's easy to be distracted by what's going on behind the action. Not that the foreground's any slouch. Character animation is beautifully fluid and a semi-silhouetted aesthetic that emphasises the overarching themes of light and dark allows me to use all of the long words that I hear whispered whenever I visit an art gallery. This Braid-esque puzzler follows the adventures of titular pie fiend PB Winterbottom, who is prepared to put the fragile space-time continuum in jeopardy just to get his hands on the next bit of filled pastry. Having suffered our fair share of incapacitating hangovers, we know those feels, bro. The visuals are inspired by the era of flickering, scratchy, silent movies, and the backgrounds are all twisted perspective and skewed architecture. Everything's slapped with a dollop of film grain and a variety of other bits of vintage visual noise. Bet you're really glad you spent all that money on your 1080p, full HD, 3D ready, 1000 hertz television, aren't you? All right, I'm convinced. Now it's time to see what you've been saying in the comments and digging out of New Mexico landfill. That's right. What? No, I said get an ET cartridge. Oh, they'd all gone by the time I got there. Take it back. What, to New Mexico? Yes. Fine. First up, your comments on last week's show in which we pondered GTA 5 on Xbox One and shanked each other in a prison riot. Take the get bus. Back. Yes, I'm taking the bus. No, go eat oh, my I'm bus. I'm taking the bus. Get <laughs> I'm in the bus. Yes. No. Yes. No. Bus for Andy. Sheo Gorath, Daedric Prince of Madness, takes an unusually moderate stance for a mythical insanity god, saying, why can't you share the bus? There seems to be plenty of room. Good point. I'm not doing what the god of madness says. Remember what happened last time? <laughs> Best birthday ever. The Rupert Littervin, meanwhile, has noticed that Mike's character looks like himself, Andy's character looks like himself, and Jane's character looks like a homicidal maniac. Oh, right. Hmm. As Powder Plays notes, that prison fight was an accurate recreation of what happens in the studio between them. It's how they decide who gets the best seat. Yeah, that's why we have to stand in here. How's your neck? Healing. Thanks for asking. Next up, your comments on the possibility of virtual reality coming to Xbox One. Should Microsoft do it? Could Microsoft do it? Will they do it at E3? And if so, what will it look like? Callum Corrigan isn't convinced. He says, answers to the questions. No, 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 and terrible. Sorry, Microsoft, but Sony have beat you to the chase. Mm. XLR Woody, meanwhile, thinks that VR is just another fad that will die out within the next couple of years. Remember a few years back when everything was gonna be 3D? Look how quickly that went away. Even TV manufacturers are moving away from 3D in favor of 4K. Ray Iron Army 8 has another suggestion for what to use it for, saying, I don't know why, but I think it would be kind of cool to use VR for game competition attendance. For example, imagine seeing the next EVO fighting tournament from the perspective of one of the characters in the background. Or maybe your next experience watching a MOBA competition would be enhanced if you felt you were watching it in an arena. The idea is kind of out there, I know, but it might be a nice novelty. Finally, Chaos Riot Zero has a great idea, saying, If I wanted to strap a 300 quid shoebox with a screen seller taped inside to my face, I'd make it myself and then never use it. How is it? Uh, I think I'll stick with Oculus. Okay, finally this week, your comments on Grid Autosport and whether it'll fix the problems of Grid 2. Well, Cody's are back and they're terribly, terribly sorry. Grid Autosport is a new game that attempts to right all the wrongs that made fans of the original Grid so grumpy. Michael Merton is on side saying, I hope so, Grid 2 was a huge fail. The original Grid is way better than Grid 2. While Sid Gautam speculates that, I don't think Mike has ever said Grid these many times. Grid, 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 Yeah, it's just lost all meaning. Grid, Grid. Finally, P Van P4 angrily kicks his way into the room to say, no, you don't get it! The problem is the cars oversteer like they're driving on a track smeared in butter on a hot summer's day. And I can see just by the gameplay shown in this video that it will be the exact same. Also, it looks like the brakes are way overpowered and there's abs on these race cars. Putting abs on race cars is disgusting the way they need to sex up video games these days. It's, it's ABS. Yes, I know how to spell, Mike. You better get going if you're going to get that skull back to New Mexico in time. I'm not having the studio be cursed again. All right, all right. <laughs> not now, Kersey. That's it for show of the week, but we know how much you liked it. So we had a word with YouTube and they've made a special button so you can specifically express that sentiment. And the button is here somewhere. Also, if you want to get in touch with us, you can tweet us at Outside Xbox or send us a message at facebook.com forward slash Outside Xbox. See you next week. So where is Mike? Oh, he went to New Mexico to return a cursed skull to a disturbed burial ground.